Hello, I'm Andy Richardson and this is Hooked UK. Today you'll find me sitting above one of the best kept secrets in the whole of the Scottish salmon fishing world, the River North Esk. We're at the foot of the Cairngorm Mountains. We've just seen an eagle flying by, but we're actually heading 20 miles east towards the coast where we're going to be fishing with Greg Thompson on the opening day for spring salmon. Uh, that's my own the boss and moan that's a, I, I got Ron to tie tie ties a dozen mm -hmm. but they're uh, just holding us a black body with a yellow tail and yeah. bristles but it seems to work yeah uh, now I've got the just looking about that's always a good one maybe not this time with a pony gold mm -hmm. that's quite a good one I think we'll keep I think we'll just keep it down to the yeah. old faithful these will these will be a bit too heavy, I think. For... Looks good. Yep. Looks good. These are good as well. The feeler. Oh, the feelers on them. Uh, yeah. That's kind of the in fly just now. Uh, these feelers, yeah. Yeah, they seem to be. I've got some of the new full of mill ones just now in the shop. Yeah, yeah they're nice. Not on them. But what was the one in uh, in Russia? Is it the fly? Is it now the? Yep. So I think it was still wet from last week as the oh, uh, super snelda. Oh yeah, yeah. With the eyes in the back. Deadly. Really? Oh. <laughs> so particularly you know, late in the season here. You know, and, and fish it like a dev minnow, get it on their beak. Bobbing. The fabulous North Esk is possibly one of the most prolific salmon rivers 
in the north of Scotland. Its source is actually in the Cairngorm Mountains and it flows to within four miles of Montrose in the North Sea. Given the right weather conditions and water conditions, the sport on this river can be absolutely phenomenal, with catches in the high teens for some lucky people in the summer. Just the silver. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? This sits. Mm-hmm. Could be it, Neil. This could be it. That's not a kelty bit of water, really. Aye. Unless you fall it out of that slack water. I think we might just have some in here, Neil. Yep, I'm excited. Yep, exactly. It's the first one of the season, so I'm kind of potentially the first one of the season. So we're into fish on the viaduct pool at Gallery in the North Esk. We don't know if it's a springer yet, but it's doing all the right things. It's gave us a few decent runs there. We've not actually seen it yet, but it's not a big fish. I want to say big, it's not a 20 pounder. Big. Oh. I think this is the bite. Yeah, it's the bite. It's a springer. Opening day, spring salmon in the North Esk. Ideal conditions on gallery, 16th of February. First spring of the season, almost at the net. Neil Anderson's doing the, the deed at the business end. He's not quite ready yet. This fish is on a conehead monkey. Just a small one. But this time of year, if there's a fish in the pool, the old green and black, 
monkey generally does the trick. <laughs> He's not want to come in. Certainly is, but nearly done now, Neil. Ah. Yes! Fantastic! <laughs> That's what we want. Oh, lovely. Absolutely spanky and icy lace. Lovely. I'll let you do the deed with her. Okay, Neil, well, we're, we're here on the North Est. We've just had a, a fish which is fantastic on opening Excellent. day. Uh, you've been here now, this is your second year on second the beat. Uh, gallery, one of the top beats on the North Est. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, there's 11 pools on this beat here. Uh, we're actually the fourth beat up from the sea. Uh, so we can get fish here within an hour after the tide every day. Um, last year we had 209 fish for the season. Of salmon and grills and 44 sea trout for the year. Fantastic. Uh, so the, the five year average mm -hmm. is around about the 200 mark. And you've not only got good fishing here, but you've also got lovely accommodation to go with the fishing. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've got a farmhouse that uh, can sleep up to nine, uh -huh. uh, which we'll show you around. Fantastic, well. yeah, fantastic. And you've approximately got about a mile and a half? About a mile and a half? There's a mile and a half here. Uh -huh. There's half a mile that's double bank uh -huh. and the rest of it's single bank. Uh -huh. and it's Primarily fly, fly fishing water. Yeah, yeah. Unle unless the water is big, uh, it's all good fly water, mm -hmm. and it's all fairly easy access and good wading as well. And as we see, the fishing is good from opening day yes. right through to the end of the season, yeah. where the beat is literally stuffed with fish. Is it? Yeah, it's, all the fish here virtually from opening day all yeah. the way through. Good. Well, we've, we've had the first one. It's only half ten. Let's go and try and get another one. Absolutely. Excellent. Very good. Cheers. Ah, certainly is. We've been pretty lucky. Mr. Grew. So, what we're fishing today, we're fishing a 13 foot 7 guideline Lassie. Uh, we've got a light Skagit, 500 gram grain Skagit on. We've got a 7.5 foot T11 tip. And the reason I fish that is just purely to allow the bigger, heavier flies and the heavier tips to fish well. Don't really need it so much in this pool, but certainly above us at the Hatton Pool, where it's deeper, we will be fishing heavier and deeper flies, so it's, it's, it's definitely worthwhile up there. However, we've got a springer, 
This was caught on a conehead monkey, chartreux in black. Always a good fly in the spring. If there's a spring on a pool, usually you nail it. And uh, certainly today it did. So between myself and Neil, we're, we're happy men. <laughs> I think it's time to get that Kelly kettle on, Andy. Well, here we are on the North Esk in Angus. As you can see, Greg down there, he's flogging in the water, trying to catch a spring salmon. And I'm about to make a brew for us both with this Kelly kettle. Now these things have been made in Ireland for quite a number of years. They're quite easy to make a, a cup of tea as long as you can get the thing kind of lit. There it is. That's it away now. A few more wee rushes. That's the kettle actually lit now. And you can use any dry materials, such as these reeds, plenty of these up and down the, the river here. Uh, you can use things like pine cones, which are absolutely ideal. And uh, you just keep popping them in, like, like so. making sure that you take the bung out and that's it away so oh that's hot so I reckon there's probably about a litre and a half of water in there and it should take around about two minutes to boil now the water's out of the esk and Greg's into a fish would you believe it we're gonna have to hold on Unbelievable. There you go, that's fishing for you and Kelly Kettles. Quite exciting. This is fish number two for Greg today. And if it's another springer, he's going to be jumping up and down, I would think. Here we go. All action on the riverbank. It's not the bar of silver that we had earlier this morning. It looks like it could be a, a kelp, which is a one of last season's fish that's spawned already and hopefully going to head back towards the North Sea in the next month or two. Still a good wee bit of sport there. Yeah. Good big fish. in the water now. If you're ready for a brew, we'll not be far away. <laughs> we'll get back to my thing. Right then, after that wee bit of excitement, 
where Greg had a fish there. Need to get this fired up again. It's actually, uh, ah, it's still in. So we put a few more of these pine cones in and hey presto, the old Kelly kettle's burning again. Whew, it's a bit bright. And this should be boiled up in next in no time. So if you're ready for a brew, Greg, if you're ready for a brew, we're boiling up. Okay, so basically, any dry material whatsoever is good enough for these kettles. Uh, pine cones, some people use dried dung that they find, depends where you are in the world. The water's out of the North Esk here, going to be boiled, sterilised, it's probably going to taste a lot better than tap water. And not only can you just boil water on these things, but you can also cook on them as well, and I'll show you that at a later date. <coughs> so, Andy, we've come down to the uh, the Hatton Pool. Now, the Hatton Pool's one of the top pools on the whole river. Uh, in the last few springs it hasn't been fishing as great as it normally does but as like all uh, winters when you get a spate it changes the nature of the pool so last year we had the current coming in hard against the bank here this year we've got the current out in the middle so it actually looks not too bad for a for a bit of an early season cast so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the monkey off that I've been fishing with uh, and I'm going to change it to a, a, a tungsten willy gun or similar just to get down. I'm also going to take the seven and a half foot mo tip off and change that to a, a 12 foot, 12 and a half foot T11 tip, which sinks at nine inches per second. So it's an extra super fast sink tip. But what that'll allow me to do is uh, get down and deep into the hole here where fish are going to be lying. And we should get a tug. Um, if there's a springer here, hopefully we'll nail it. If not, we should maybe pick up a kelt. But we'll give it a bash and we'll, uh, we'll see how we get on. That's the best we could do. So that's us changed over. Uh, we've put on a, let's say, 12 and a half foot T11 tip just to get it right down there. And on the, the business end, we've put on one of my favourites, which is the uh, the Super Snelda. Uh, it's got a, tungst a tungsten body and a tungsten cone head. So again, it'll get the fly right down to where the fish are. And there's a lot of snow melt in this water. There's a bit of a tinge of colour, so the orange and yellow and black, you know, always a winning, always a winning combination. But with the snow melt in the water, you know, the fish aren't going to be massively active. They're going to be deep and they're going to be lethargic. So it's a case of getting the fly down deep onto their beak to instigate that take. So uh, the Super Snelda, cracking all round fly, does well in the spring, does well in the autumn. All, all round good fly. Okay, so we're at the Hatton streams and then we've got the Hatton pool below us here. The water's pretty fast for, for February for, getting, for picking up a springer, but as you'll see, we've got a crease all the way down the middle, all the way down the centre here, and we've got this back eddy. If we're going to get a fish sitting here, they'll be right on this crease. So just give it, we're just going to give it five minutes, a few casts, just to let the fly swing around into that crease, and we'll work the fly. If there's a springer there, it will make itself known, hopefully. From there, we'll go down to the next croy, and we'll do exactly the same again. We'll fish across the current. We'll let the fly swing right in, into the edge of the current on the crease, and then we'll work it down in the depths. And from below there, we'll go more into the slacker water. We might pick up a kelp down there. But uh, if there's a springer here, as I say, we should, we should hopefully do the business. So let's have a look and see. So we'll just start off with a short cast and let it sw quickly swing around and then just into that crease there and as it hits the crease it's back and forth just to work it just to give it that extra movement I see a lot of people just fishing the fly static and although they still catch fish a fly that's been, that has worked is going to 
trigger the aggressive instincts of a salmon probably better and therefore you know it could increase your catch rate so it's important to, to experiment about and not just fish the same all the time fish it square bring it around faster certainly in the summer do an upstream mend do a downstream mend work the fly try different depths don't just keep doing the same thing all the time What people seem to forget sometimes is salmon are incredibly aggressive creatures. They're predators. If we were in the sea, if we were a prawn, they would have us. So when these fish see a fly or something coming into their territory, you know they're aggressive. They're gonna they're they're gonna have a good go at it. Particularly spring salmon. They're they're ferocious creatures. So gradually, just letting the line out fishing down the crease towards the next croy. I say a dozen casts should do it, just to cover it. It's not a big bit of water here. <coughs> in the summer when the grills are in, this is just a, an amazing pool. I've had some cracking fish out here, cracking fun, and you can actually see the fish crashing and porpoising further down, coming up through the railway viaduct, crashing below us here. And you just know you're you're in with the shout. <coughs> They're going to come into the pool any minute. And at the back end, it's a great holding pool as well. I mean, it's I think it goes down to about 20 feet over the far end there. Okay, Neil. So we've had a fantastic uh, day on the North Esk. We've we've had a few kelts and there's uh, been a springer caught uh, by myself, thankfully, <laughs> which is uh, which has been fantastic. You've got a lovely beat here. Uh, Obviously, you don't just run the fishing here. You've also got your own tackle shop in Forfar. That's right. Yeah, I have uh, Angus angling in Forfar, uh, predominantly fly fishing and fly tying supplies. But I do a whole range of uh, fishing tackle, and on my website as well. Fantastic. You, I see. You've, I've been in the shop many times. You've got a fantastic selection of fly tackle. Yeah. Uh, so any certainly any fisher going up to the D, or certainly coming to the North Esk, should yeah. pop in and have a wee nosy. That's, That's fine. Yeah. Well, Neil, thanks very much for having us today. No problem. Uh, I think it's time to go for a beer. Very good. Excellent. Thank thanks, you. Greg.